Hey guys, so I've been cleaning out my attic and tidying things up and I was going through my sock yarn stash. There are some really beautiful skeins in there and I just thought, how nice would it be if all of those skeins became socks? And I've been thinking, how can I make that happen? Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a moment where we come every Friday to talk about the fiber arts. Today, we're gonna to talk about knitting socks. It's October and every year we celebrate the fine practice of knitting your own socks for Socktober. So hand knitted socks are an incredible luxury to wear some kind of merino or cashmere or silk or wool blend that's been dyed by hand and then knit by hand into a sock that wraps around your foot is just incredibly luxurious. And so I was looking through all of my stash at all of the lovely sock yarn and I was just thinking, man, I wish I had more hand knit socks. So <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I had this beautiful dream about a sock knitting machine. And if you've never heard of a sock knitting machine, it's basically a circular knitting machine where there's a set number of hooks positioned around a cylinder. And then you crank the handle of this knitting machine and those hooks move and the, they hook the yarn and then they create new stitches with all of those hooks. So you can get a set that is 60 stitches around or 72 stitches around or 56 stitches around. But basically this is a bigger and more sophisticated version of the toilet paper tube that I made <laughs> for my kids where I took a toilet paper tube and I taped some popsicle sticks to it. And I used these tubes to teach the kids how to basically knit an I-cord during the pandemic when we were at home homeschooling. And so I had this dream that I was sitting there cranking out socks with my lovely stash and this sock knitting machine. When you knit socks by hand, they can take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months to knit a pair. <laughs> but if you knit socks with a sock knitting machine, the dream is that you could make a pair of socks in an hour or two. So when I woke up, I was still lying in bed and Googling how to find a sock knitting machine. Now, I know I'm just trying to convince myself that I don't actually need a sock knitting machine, but I watched a couple of videos about how to do it. And it's probably not as magical as it is in my imagination. I watched a couple of videos where people were having to knit the heel and so you crank back and forth and then doing shaping and doing ribbing and having to insert individual needles into the ribber machine and it's, a whole other learning curve to learn how to make socks with a sock knitting machine. And so I went back and thought about how easy or difficult it is to knit your own socks by hand. And honestly, I'm here to convince you that it's not that difficult. So knitting socks takes only one skein of yarn and the project is very portable. I would knit socks in the dark in the movie theaters when there were movies playing in movie theaters or when you're watching TV. It requires very little concentration for the most part, except when you're doing the heel. And so I started knitting socks very, very early on when I started knitting again. This is um, my very, very first pair of hand knit socks and I still wear them to this day. I I think I made these in 2006 and I still wear them. This pattern that I learned from is really the simplest pattern and I continue to make the same sock even now. But basically you just cast on 60 stitches and then you knit one by one ribbing for about an inch and then you continue on and you knit a stockinette in the round and this is your leg. And then you knit a heel flap, you turn the heel and then you continue on and knit this section is for your foot. And this again is 60 stitches around, just stockinette in the round. And then finally you finish with some toe shaping. This is the first sock that I ever made. And this is the sock that I just finished knitting. And it is exactly the same pattern. <laughs> so even to this day, I still continue to make this very same pattern. So since knitting my first ever pair of socks, I also knit my second ever pair of socks. And so these are all made with commercial sock yarn. They are uh, very, very intense and strong sock yarns. So they have, I think about 25% nylon for strength and they were super wash merino. They're very tightly spun. They're very firm yarns. 
and uh, they have lasted very, very well. But in knitting these socks, I learned a lot of things about what makes a good hand knit sock. And one of the things is like, I knit the leg of this and the leg fits fine, but because my cast on was not stretchy enough, this does not really fit comfortably around my leg. And so this, I, I almost never wear these socks because the cast on is too tight and it's not comfortable. And so, yeah, these don't have as much wear as the other ones. This is another pair of socks that I made very early on, and they have like a little bit of lovely leafy lace at the top here in the leg. And then in wearing these ones, I discovered that these legs are too short, and then they also don't feel comfortable because the leg is not the right length. And so even though the cast on is a little bit more stretchy and this fits around my leg, it's not long enough to feel comfortable. And then I have other socks here. These ones are old socks that are hand dyed yarns, but these ones, they are showing a little bit more wear. And so it became more uh, important to me to make sure that when I'm knitting this yarn, that I'm knitting it firmly enough to make a strong cloth so that way the socks don't fall apart. So right now I am just finishing up a pair of socks that I made with a single sock blank. When you work with a single sock blank, it and the sock blanks that we make, they're gradient sock blanks. So it's making two fraternal socks. They don't match at all, but I'm not really fussed about it. I don't really mind. I like the colors. I like how they're turning out. And so that's just what I'm doing. And so right now I'm just finishing up the toe shaping for the last sock, and then I'll be able to have a new pair of socks to wear. Now I started out with this pattern that is 60 stitches around and I just continue to make this same sock pattern over and over again. But I've found that over the years I want to make socks for, I've made socks for my husband. I made socks for him for when we got married and I've made socks for my son and I also want to make socks for my daughter except her feet keep growing. <laughs> so I keep missing out on the opportunity to make the socks in the right size. Um, and so they're obviously not going to wear the exact same size socks as I do, and so they need a custom sized sock pattern. So I have in the past been using Kate Atherley's book. She has a book called Custom Fit Socks, which is excellent. And you just work through all of the measurements and the calculations, and then you can create a pattern to knit from. We also have in the school, Tabitha taught a top-down custom fit sock class last year. And so she also has a pattern in there where you do all their measurements and then you fill in the blanks and then you create your own sock pattern to knit from. And she teaches the entire process from working from the cuff to the leg, to turning the heel, heel flap, all of these kinds of things, different kinds of toe shaping. So if you are at all interested in learning how to knit socks from the top down, I would encourage you to check out Tabitha's class. We do have another class that's going to be coming out very, 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 very shortly, and that is about knitting socks from the toe up, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But right now, my personal goal is really to make socks less precious and just sort of normalize making them and wearing them. Kind of like the handmade gifts that you make and you give to your friends and your family and you want them to use them. but they consider them too precious and so they don't get used, they're, they're saved. Sometimes I do this with socks too. The hand knit socks that I have, I still have some in my closet, I have some in my attic, and they're all beautiful hand knit socks, but then I'm afraid to wear them because, well, they seem too precious. So I have to get more into the habit of just wearing them more often and making more of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to aim to carry around a sock project with me everywhere and just have it in my knitting bag, have it in my regular bag, have it in my purse at all times. So one of the things that I wanna do is because I've never actually done this, but I've never actually knit two socks at the same time. So I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna work with this one. This is our double sock blank here. So rather than working from a single sock blank where the gradient is painted over the entire skein, this double sock blank is basically like two skeins in one. So it's two lengths of yarn that have been doubled up and knit together. So you can kind of see, this is what it looks like. This is a double sock blank. It's much, much smaller in dimension than a regular sock blank. And you can see that as I unravel it, there's two strands coming off at the same time. So what I'm gonna aim to do is once I finish off knitting this sock, I am going to cast on for two socks to knit them both at the same time. This colorway is called Spacewalk. It's one of my favorites. I also wanna show you something that is limited time for October, and that is a new sock blank called Autumn Moon. 
So this is the single sock blank that's called Autumn Moon. This is the gradient that is here. So here's the single sock blank. And you can see here as just a comparison, this is what the double sock blank looks like size wise compared to the single sock blank. So you can see it looks like it's about half, right? Because it's doubled up. So this is the autumn moon single sock blank. And then you can see it here. It's wound up into a center pull ball. When you get it, it looks like this, but you can wind it up yourself and make yourself a little center pull ball. And then I wanted to show you what Charlotte at the studio knit up from that. She made this. This fabulous shawl that basically she walked around the studio and she showed everybody this thing that she made. And now everybody at the studio wants to make exactly the same one. <laughs> So you can see she's using the autumn moon sock blank and then she uh, also combined it with snowfall, which is like a very, very pale silvery gray color. And um, for that silver gray color, she chose to use Cash Lux Spark. So there's a little bit of sparkle in this shawl here, but you can see just how lovely that is. So this pattern happens to be called Shari. Uh, it's, it's a pattern that Tabitha designed from a while back, but just using it in this way with a sock blank, with a gradient sock blank, is super fun. I feel like we were talking about this yesterday about how it has like a little bit of a, a rainbow kind of feel, but at the same time, it's not a rainbow and it's kind of muted and it's very autumny and it's kind of like a fall rainbow. There's not a ton of green green in it. It kind of skips over from that orangey gold color to the aqua. So yeah, when you look at it like this, it feels a little bit like, you know, autumn leaves, and rain. <laughs> so that is basically it for today. I would love to hear about your first pair of hand knit socks. What were your first socks like? What kind of pattern did you make? Do you have any patterns you can recommend? I would love to hear about more patterns. And do you have any advice about sock knitting machines? If you have one, if I should get one, or if I should just stick to knitting socks by hand, if you have any suggestions on how to knit socks to at a time, I would also love to hear that. So uh, this month is all about socks. <laughs> so tell me all your stories about socks. I would love to hear more about that. So if you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here every Friday to talk about something to do with the fiber arts, whether it's knitting or spinning, weaving or dyeing. I thank you guys for being here and I will see you guys in the next one where we're probably gonna talk about socks again. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>